Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new chapter of Old Man Brad. Whether you are new to the show or returning for another episode, thank you so much for giving me a listen. If you are a fan, drop me a review over on your favorite podcatcher, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, whatever it may be. I'd love to hear what you think of the show. So this chapter, I'm bringing you another double feature. This double feature, you have something that is playing in the theaters with Imaginary, and I have some thoughts on another film that is on VOD right now, and that is Dr. Jekyll. Both very different films, and I will dive into those here very shortly. Before I do, I want to say if you are in the Cincinnati area, come out to Frightful Fridays at the Esquire Theater. It is on the third Friday of the month, and this month for March, we are screening Leprechaun from 1993, starring Jennifer Aniston and Warwick Davis. Cannot wait for this. I love the first Leprechaun film. The sequels, yeah, you know... That's a whole nother thing. Come out to the Esquire. Let's have a blast. Friday, March 15th at 10 p.m. All right, let's move into it. Let's start with our first film, which is currently playing in theaters, and that is Imaginary. It's nice to see you again, Alice. Jessica told me you've been spending time with a new friend. He doesn't want me to talk to you. Chauncey? My favorite thing is his eyes. I can see anything I can imagine in them. He asked you to do something that hurt you. Every culture has a name for it. We call them imaginary friends. Just because you stop believing in them doesn't mean they're gone and they're angry that you left. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him. This movie was co-written and directed by Jeff Wadlow. It stars DeWanda Wise, Tegan Burns, Piper Braun, Betty Buckley, and many others. And it, this is a Blumhouse movie. This was produced by Blumhouse, who last year had the great movie Megan. Absolutely love that movie. And then we get, you know, for every Megan in a year, we got movies like The Exorcist Believer, which wasn't very good. I did not like Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, unfortunately, we got this one. Imaginary just did not hit right for me. And Blumhouse, Blumhouse has been very hit and miss. Like, they have some good movies like Happy Death Day, Freaky, Black Phone. But then you, like I said, you you get some that are, are, are very bad. A couple of those diamonds in the rough, like There's Something Wrong with the Children, Run Sweetheart Run, or Sick, which is on Hulu. Those are a few, like, non-theatrical ones that were a good hit for Blumhouse. So going into this film, Imaginary, I was pretty excited to see it. I saw, you know, obviously the trailers. I guess I wanted kind of a Megan-esque film with an imaginary friend. So you saw clips from the movie of a teddy bear kind of rampaging through. This movie is this woman marries in with this this man and his two daughters. And his two daughters, something happened to their mother. The daughters aren't fans of her you know they especially the older daughter teenage daughter feel like she has a lot to prove to her she's just trying to make amends going to this house a place that makes her happy that maybe we can all connect the young girl alice finds a teddy bear in the basement and begins to talk to it so they're like oh look she's got an imaginary friend and come to find out that the voices they hear were not Alice pretending to be the imaginary friend. It was the imaginary friend Chauncey all along. And things go awry, so to speak. I say I didn't like it. I came in, I wanted to like it. My friend Paul from the Countdown Podcast, he and I don't always agree on films. A lot of the times, especially horror films, there are movies that he absolutely hates, but I love. And he rated this one low, so... I went in going, I'm going to love this movie because he hated it. And yeah, I'm sorry, Paul. I doubted you. 
This movie was not great. It starts out really slow. It had moments where it could have been good. It could have really taken off. It needed more of the bear doing shit. Like, the bear did nothing through this movie. It made some voices. It turned its head. I wanted this bear to kind of start a rampage, even when things start to happen. And the bear kind of makes comments about killing other people or, you know, you're going to pay for that. But it doesn't really come back. You get to a point in this movie, I'm probably going to spoil some things right now, but you get to a point in this movie where they end up in the imaginary world that looks like something out of A Nightmare on Elm Street, like the Dream Warriors need to show up, or like the Labyrinth in Hellraiser 2, you know, where they go at the end. It just didn't seem very, <laughs> for a movie called Imaginary, imaginative at all. It got to a point, especially towards the end, where I felt like they watched Coraline and they took many references, many things from Coraline and just like, oh, you know what? This was cool. I'm going to put it in our movie. And I was legitimately sitting in the theater laughing at it. People were kind of looking at me and I did not have a good time. I did not enjoy this film. It was a complete fail in every aspect. And I cannot recommend imaginary at all it just it just fell completely flat well there's the first one that one's in theaters hopefully you know i help you avoid running out and paying to go to the theater to see imaginary because it wasn't worth it but we're gonna flip to the other side this is a film that you can rent at home it just came out on vod and that is a dr jekyll two steps ahead that is the secret. Nina Jekyll is excellence incarnate. She demands the same from others. What we're looking for is someone who could help about the house. You like my chessboard, do you play? Oh, sorry, that's at me. There are cameras in almost every room. Nina has been resistant to coexisting with staff until you a reimagining of the infamous Dr. Jekyll from Robert Louis Stevenson's 1886 novella, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This is directed by Joe Stevenson, and it stars Eddie Izzard and Scott Chambers. This is a film that came out from Hammer Film Production. Anyone who knows Hammer Films, like they did a lot of horror movies way, way back in the day from, you know, in the 30s, and then through like the 50s, there were so, so many that they came out with. And there are some of the pinnacle films that, that people talk about. Like you mention Hammer Horror to people. They, they kind of know what you're talking about. So this is the company coming back out. And what I loved in this is you get this opening sequence. It, it's almost like a Marvel sequence. You know, in Marvel movies, you get quick clips of the Marvel characters as it fades into the Marvel logo, and then, you know, you're going to start your movie. This kind of does that same thing. You get clips of Hammer horror films as it fades into the Hammer logo, and we, we start our film. And it was kind of exciting to see, like, they're coming back. You know, they're doing a Dr. Jekyll Let's go. Let's let's how how is this? And you know what? Complete opposite of the first film. Imaginary was a huge miss. And this one, this had some moments that kind of missed that I kind of wish it would have delved into a little bit more. But I was very, very into this film. Eddie Izzard, who plays Dr. Jekyll in this, Dr. Nina Jekyll, is does a fantastic job in this movie of this dark twisted character i wish that here's the here's the piece that i kind of wished it would have done i wished it would have delved into the hide side a little bit more when you finally kind of get more and more of it it really kind of uh wet my appetite of wanting more i was like oh i want to see more of this two-sided of jekyll and hyde you know the character you always know of scott chambers who plays the character rob he is He's kind of he's out of work. He he needs money to kind of help with 
he has a sick daughter. So he gets this job of going to Dr. Jekyll's mansion, kind of helping her out and making sure he, meds are taken, meals are eaten, and everything else. And Jekyll kind of plays him. And there's the two-sided as it kind of goes back and forth. And it is a very engaging movie. Scott Chambers and Eddie Izzard are phenomenal. There are a few scenes where there's a back and forth between the two. It is great. It is very well acted. And you spiral down into where you get more of the hide side. And then there's a little bit that happens. I'm not spoiling anything at all. Some things that happen leading you up to the ending. I am definitely recommending this one. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Like I really did enjoy the movie. I loved Eddie Izzard's performance in it. Scott Chambers was great in this. And my big complaint, I think it could have elevated it is getting more of the hide side because it it does kind of jump from one to the other. It goes pretty quickly. You get it kind of, you kind of seek it along the way, but then, you know, you get this big jump towards the end and it, it left me wanting more. Like, I'm just like, oh, I want to see more of this. Like, I don't want to say a rampage, but I want to see more of this dark side of Dr. Jekyll. I want to see Mr. Hyde doing more things. I want to, I wanted to see like Scott Chambers character bringing people in and Hyde having like, killing them or or whatever it might be i just i wanted more of that so it kind of led me up to this like oh i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it you get some of it and then it's over and you're like oh it it just leaves you wanting more which isn't a bad thing at all if they made another one i'd be all for it i would jump right in so dr jekyll starring eddie izzard go check this one out because i found it very very enjoyable and a very good character driven film well there you go there are my two films one from the theater that you can skip so you can just stay home and rent the other one so skip imaginary go rent dr jekyll and before i go i'll give you one more recommendation that you can stream at home if you don't want to rent a movie you just want to stream one if you have shutter go watch satanic hispanics this is a film that landed on my top horror list from last year love 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 this movie so much it's an anthology film so you get five little stories and they're kind of interwoven together love satanic hispanic so much there's great gore in it practical work there's humor there's everything you can think of it is streaming on shutter right now everybody needs to go check it out well that will do it for another chapter of old man brad if you're a fan of the show You can become a patron over at patreon.com slash oldmanbrad. I have more content than I do over there. And I want to thank everyone who is currently a patron of the show. I really, really, really do appreciate that you support the show. I will be back later this week with a brand new chapter with my friend Drew from the Real Feels podcast. We are going to kick off our 200 Days of Horror We're going to do 200 days from March 15th until October 1st. We're going to do a 200 days of horror challenge. He and I are going to watch 200 movies, but you don't have to. We'll let you know all the details on that episode coming later this week. Just subscribe and you'll never miss it. Just snuggle up in that blanket. Turn off the lights because it's okay to be scared. We'll talk to you later, everybody. (laughs) 